Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and in today's video, we're going to show you a UI tip that makes it easier for your users to find the data they're looking for. We're going to show you how to use a select function and how to use a last submit function to auto select a record in a gallery. So stay tuned. When you have a lot of records in a gallery, those records can get lost. What we want to do is we want to make it easier for your users to recognize what row they added in a form so that when they're in the gallery, it can auto-identify that. So in this UI tip, we're going to show you a few ways to construct the gallery to make it easier for your users to find the records they're looking for and to find what record they just added as well. So let's take a look at this. We're going to build a very basic application here. So I've got a blank form here. I'm going to go ahead and drop in a gallery and we'll just make this uh, title. Now we're not going to show you all the steps I'm using for this because you know what, we have other videos around that. But just want to kind of build a, a basic form here. We'll point over to accounts, which is the dataverse table. And I'm also going to sort this record as well so we can see the records we care about up top. So I'll sort the accounts and I'm going to base it on name. Okay. All right, now we'll see at least things at least a little alphabetically here. Additionally, I'm going to go ahead and make that a white gallery here. Uh, I'm going to make this gallery one so it matches what you guys have as well. All right, so now that we've got that, I want to, I want to, whenever you select Anne here, I want to make sure Anne is highlighted first. That's our first little UI tip using template fill. So I'll select the gallery on the, in the property drop down box. I'll go to my template fill property. And once I find that template fill property, I'm just going to say something like, hey, if this item, the row I have selected, dot is selected, there we go, then let's change a the color. So I'll change the color. For the purpose of this video, I would normally use like white smoke or something a little understated. But for the purpose of this video, let's try something a little more obnoxious, like a light blue or something like that. Let's try light blue first. Okay, really obvious which one is selected now. Normally I'll go a little more understated than that. Okay. Now, we now know that when I select these records, we can see as a user which row is selected. Now let's drop in our form to actually add a new record. I'm going to point this form over to accounts also. Uh, I'm not going to do a whole lot with this. There's actually you know, hundreds of fields in there, but we'll just go with these three right here for, for giggles here. I'll also make it a nice white background also so it stands out. And I'll drop my button in here for saving the record. Okay, so I'll call that save. We also want to make this form, this big form right here, uh, new mode. Again, this is all covered in previous videos. And when you, when you hit the save button, we'll just go ahead and uh, submit the data to the database. So submit form, form three. And again, I'll go ahead and change the name of this form three to form one so it matches your stuff a little bit. Oh, not 31, form one. Oh, there we go. All right, so we're submitting form one. Now on the form level here, I'm going to go to do our normal trick here and we'll use the on success property. This is a best practice that, that, that now we know the record actually has made it to your SharePoint list, your SQL Server database, your Excel spreadsheet, whatever it might be, your data source of choice. So when I know it makes it there, we can do things like notifications, but in my case, I'm going to reset the form back to new form mode again. Otherwise, it will, it will uh, 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 go back to edit mode after that. Now that we've done that, we also want to go through and save the record that was just saved. Now we could put that update context at the end, however it will always be blank because a new form is going to wipe the information clear. So we're going to put, want to put our variable where we're saving this up front. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to create a new variable using update context. Again, previous videos cover how to do this. And I'll call that variable var last submit. Okay. And th that the value of that will be form one dot last submit. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. So now that we have that, that value in a variable, we can then go over here on our gallery, go to the uh, default property. There we go. And the default property, I'm going to set that to var last submit. So let's see what it looks like now. I'll hit the play button. I'll enter a value like uh, AAA2. Hit save. And you can see it's now selected. Awesome. That's 90% of what I wanted. But I also want it to automatically select this little, 
built arrow right here. Let's wire that arrow up first. So to wire that arrow up, I want it to automatically edit the record now. So when you select the arrow, I'm going to tell it to edit form, form to one. And on the, on the form, I'm going to go over here and tell it to the item property, which is only used on edits. I'm going to set that to gallery one dot selected. Okay. Now when you select AAA, AA2, it's going to auto select that. So let's try again. Uh, let me hit save to get rid of that. And I'll type AAA3, hit save. And there we go, but it's not selected. I didn't actually click on that button right there. That's our final step. So our final step, we're gonna make sure we can click on that button right there. Now, one more thing to kind of do before I do that, I'm gonna clone this button and I'm gonna create a, uh, a new button or something like that. And this new button, all it's gonna do is just, just set new form on that. Just kind of reset things. You can also do a reset form here if you wanted to as well. Just to kind of clean that up if you have any kind of uh, updates that are kind of mid midstream there. All right, the goal of this again is just to kind of wipe out that AAA3. So that way you'll see in a moment here what the problem could be causing. All right, so I want to select that arrow right there. To do that, let's go to our form and our on success of that form where all that code is being done. We are capturing all this at the very end here or wherever you wish. I'm going to do a select statement here, and I'm going to select gallery one. There we go. Gallery one, comma. I'll grab the first record there that has been selected, and then comma. I'll go ahead and um, go ahead and select the arrow there. I think it's called next arrow. Next arrow is six in my case. Let me call something else in your case. Okay, perfect. So this is selecting the gallery, and inside the gallery, the first record that was defaulted over here. Next, next arrow. Because I had the combination of this plus my default of var last submit on the gallery, that combination will do this. Let's play this. Let's do AAA4. Hit save. Now it selects it. It also clicked on the arrow, so I'm seeing that over here. And this is why I hit the new button right here. So that way you can kind of clear that out. That's why, that's why I add that button, so I can clear out if I want to add a new record. Now this can be used a number of ways. One of the ways it can be used is if you have a child record uh, followed by parent records. So you might want to have a have it auto select once you once you once you create the parent record to auto select that parent record. So then the children records can be created next. So that's one of the ways it can be used. It can also be used as a little UI trick like like this. This is one of the things we cover in our training at PragmaticWorks.com. You can find more information about that in the description of this video. We also do ones like one-on-one -on -one mentoring in case you get stuck. And we do things called hackathons where we build an app with you, uh, your prototype in your time. Uh, that's one-on-one -on -one or one-on-many. All right, have a great day and thanks for watching this video. Please do subscribe to that if, if, in case this video is helpful. Apologize for my cold today. Have a great day. Goodbye.